in this video we are going to talk about tRNA that is the transfer RNA now as the name suggests transfer RNA means it might be involved in some kind of transfer reactions now before moving on specifically to tRNA we must understand the uh, types of RNA which are available in the biological systems so first let's see that what exactly an RNA is we all know that DNA is the deoxyribonucleic acid and it is composed of four different types of nucleic acid, uh, nucleotides which are adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. However, the difference between DNA and RNA is that in RNA there is no thymine present. Instead of thymine there is uracil. So RNA is composed of adenine, uracil, cytosine and guanine. So these are the four different nucleotides present in the RNA. Now, there are further three types of RNA which are formed from the DNA by the process of transcription. So, these types of RNA are mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. Well, mRNA stands for the messenger RNA. tRNA stands for transfer RNA. RRNA stands for ribosomal RNA. Now as the name is suggesting, each one have its specified function. Messenger RNA means that this type of RNA is carrying some kind of message in it which is responsible for further protein synthesis. And the tRNA as the name suggests, it is responsible in the transfer. Transfer of what? Transfer of amino acids into the growing polypeptide chain. And the ribosomal RNA, it is, uh, it is the constituent of the ribosomes, which are also a part of the translation machinery. Now, this is the basic arrangement of an mRNA. So, an mRNA is, a, uh, is the RNA formed from DNA by the process of transcription. So, this mRNA contains the message which is responsible for the synthesis of proteins. So, from this mRNA, proteins will be formed. Now, not whole of this mRNA gets translated into protein. Only a specific portion of it does. This specific portion which will get translated into proteins is known as the ORF or the open reading frame. Now, mRNA contains nucleotides. Four nucleotides, adenine, uracil, cytosine and guanine. So, whole, whole of this mRNA is made up of these four nucleotides. Now, starting from the 5' prime end of this ORF, which is this portion, to the 3' prime end of this ORF, the message of these nucleotides which is present in these ORF is read in a 3 nucleotide long sequences known as codons. So this whole ORF is made up of codons. Basically it is made up of nucleotides but these nucleotides are further segregated by a 3 nucleotide repeat. Now let's understand this with the help of this example. So consider this hypothetical situation where we have this mRNA and this particular portion is the ORF. This is just, an hypo, uh, just a hypothetical situation uh, to illustrate this with an example. So suppose this is the ORF. So now this ORF of this mRNA contains the message for a particular polypeptide chain that is the protein. So this ORF contains three nucleotide long sequences so this uh, ORF contains nucleotides which will be read in three nucleotide long sequences the first uh, codon will be AUG so this is the first codon and this will be read by tRNA the transfer RNA so for example this AUG it codes for methionine so the first amino acid in the growing polypeptide will be methionine then the next codon will be read it is CCA now this CCA codes for proline so the next amino acid into the growing polypeptide chain would be proline then the next codon ACU this ACU will uh, be read and um, it codes for threonine so the next amino acid in the growing polypeptide chain will be threonine then the next codon which is CGG it codes for arginine and similarly this AUA which codes for isoleucine. So this was a hypothetical situation and uh, we made a protein from the particular sequence of this ORF. So this is the basic thing. Now how this happens? 
it involves the translation machinery now the translation machinery involves the ribosomes as well as the trnas this was the mrna so this is the mra now going on to the uh, trna and the ribosomes or the rrnas so the ribosomes they first have to bind to the mrna the ribosomes and the trna are also involved in the translation that is the conversion of this message into this protein so the role of ribosomes is that they come and bind to the um, this mrna and uh, and just allow it to be stretched enough for each of the codon to be read properly because if uh, this mrna would not be stretched like a, a linear chain then maybe it is possible that the codons may overlap so for that the ribosomes are essential and uh, these ribosomes they first bind to a sequence present upstream of this ORF known as Shine Delgarno sequence so the ribosomes bind here and when the translation has to start they shift to the start codon uh, present over here now for more information in eukaryotes the start codon is always AUG which means that in eukaryotes all the proteins will have the first amino acid as methionine this is for eukaryotes and in case of prokaryotes uh, this AUG is there but it codes for formyl methionine so remember this that in case of eukaryotes the first amino acid is always methionine and in prokaryotes the first amino acid is always formyl methionine in the polypeptides or the proteins uh, which are formed uh, moving on to the trna what is the role of trna here now have you thought that when we were uh, translating this message of mrna into this protein from where these amino acids came these amino acids may might have come from somewhere uh, otherwise from where would we get them so now these amino acids which are being incorporated into the growing polypeptide chain is obtained via the trnas that is the transfer rnas now these transfer rnas are responsible for the uptake of amino acids from the nearby areas and uh, they come and bind to the ribosome and uh, incorporate the particular amino acid specified for that particular codon into the growing polypeptide chain now how that happens the thing is that these ribosomes they move three nucleotides away like this so first they will come to AUG which is the first codon now this first codon specified for methionine now after reading methionine they will shift it uh, the ribosomes will shift itself and it will go to the second codon that is CCA now uh, this CCA codes for proline now how this proline is coming this is coming from trna so as the ribosome shifts three nucleotides away that is to the next codon uh, it is red and the trna uh, containing the particular uh, uh, amino acid specified for that particular codon the trna uh, brings it along with itself and incorporates it into the growing polypeptide chain and so on so the ribosome shifts three nucleotides or one codon away each at a time and the trna brings that particular uh, amino acid specified for that particular uh, codon and incorporates into it into the growing polypeptide chain now let's see the structure of trna that how a trna looks like Now this structure of trna is known as the clover leaf structure of trna so these are the basic elements of a trna these are the three loops present over here this is the d loop this is the pseudo uridine loop this is the anticodon loop and this is the variable loop so there are four different loops present in the trna so these trnas they act as adapters between the codons and the amino acids now the amino acid will be incorporated to the D, uh, trna in this the three prime site so here the amino acid will be attached by the trna and then this trna will go uh, to the mrna 
bound by the ribosomes and the ribosomes have a particular site present in them for the fitting of these tRNAs in, into them. So these tRNAs will fit into that site of the ribosome and read the codon present uh, at that time and incorporate the amino acid specified for that particular codon into the uh, growing polypeptide chain. So starting from the 5' prime end, the common features of the tRNA is, so first the 5' prime uh, end of this contains a phosphate group over here. So this is the first point. The 5' prime end of the tRNA contains a phosphate group. Then there is a 7 base pair long stem called the acceptor arm. So this is 7 base pairs long. This is called the acceptor arm. Then there is a D loop which contains a modified base known as dihydrouridine. So, so this loop along with the uh, normal nucleotides, it contains an unusual nucleotide uh, called dihydrouridine. Then there is an anticodon loop and this loop contains the nucleotides which are complementary to the codon which is being read by the tRNA for the incorporation of that particular amino acid which is carrying uh, to incorporate into the growing polypeptide chain. So this anticodon if say for example if the first codon of the mRNA is AUG then the anticodon would be UAC. So this would be the anticodon so that there is a complementarity between the anticodon and the codon of the mRNA and hence if this complementarity is sufficient enough then the amino acid it, uh, the tRNA is carrying will get incorporated into the protein, growing protein. Then there is this pseudouridine loop and this pseudouridine uh, loop contains pseudouridine as an unusual base along with the normal bases. Then uh, this is the 3' prime arm and this is the site where the amino acid being, is being attached and from here it will get incorporated into the growing polypeptide uh, of the translation machinery. Moreover, if the tRNA uh, carries an amino acid then it is known as the charged tRNA and if it does not carry an amino acid then it is known as the uncharged tRNA. That is uh, the tRNA in the state when it is not attached to, uh, to the amino acid is called the uncharged and when it, should, um, and when it is attached to the amino acid then it is called charged tRNA.